you got to think about this guy. Um, this is a guy that didn't have that the media didn't give a time of day to after he was accused of sleeping with an underage girl. And there's a reason why no one in the conference came and defended him, because we had all seen the videos he was showing on the house floor that all of us had walked away of the girls that he had slept with. He'd brag about how he would uh, crush ED medicine and 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 chase it with. Um, with an energy drink so he could go all night. This is obviously before you got married. And so when that accusation came out, no one defended him, and then no one on the media would give him a time of the day. All of a sudden, he found fame because he opposed the Speaker of the House back in November, and he's always stayed there. And he's not, he was never going to leave until he got this last moment of fame by, saying, by, by going after a motion to vacate. The video you just watched pretty much confirms what I think a lot of us suspected would happen. Matt Gates is getting Cawthorned by the Republican Party. Now, to refresh your memory, Madison Cawthorn revealed that Republicans invited him to their Cokefield orgies, and they retaliated by subsequently releasing numerous scandalous videos of him in the lead up to his primary, and he ultimately lost. And now they're giving Matt Gates that same exact treatment, and this is only the beginning. Now, some Republicans are so pissed off about McCarthy's ouster due to Matt Gates that they're threatening physical violence against Matt gates publicly but before we get to that i do want to look at cnn's follow-up to mark wayne mullen's comments along with the response from matt gates congressman gates has never been charged with any sex trafficking crime and he gave this statement to cnn in response i don't think mark wayne mullen and i have said 20 words to each other on the house floor this is a lie from someone who doesn't know me and who's coping with the death of the political career of his friend kevin thoughts and prayers i won't lie i think that response from matt gates was pretty funny and I understand why he's kind of going with this scorched earth strategy. The bridge is already burnt, right? Republicans, even before he ousted McCarthy, were plotting to expel him. So now he has nothing to lose. They're after his throat, so he has no reason to remain polite. But Mark Wayne Mullen uh, was not done spilling the tea on Matt Gates because in a Newsmax interview, he alleged the following. The first time I ever met this guy, he walked up to me and Christy Nome at the time was at the podium. He was speaker or he was elected at the time. He was a member elect. So we was going through conference and orientation and he walked up to me as Christy Nome, now Governor Christy Nome. And she, he said, man, she's a fine and you can put the B word in place there. And I looked at him, I said, really? Because Christy is a very close friend of mine. And he turned around and walked away. Later, I will say he came up and apologized for that. But he still shouldn't have said it. It was completely out of line. And this is the type of individual Matt Gates is. Clearly not a fan. Very concerning, as Elon Musk would say. Now, Matt Gates being a misogynistic pig isn't necessarily the bombshell revelation that, uh, you think because I feel like he's been pretty openly misogynistic towards women, publicly attacking them, uh, saying overtly sexist things. But I mean, his constituents are still voting for him regardless. So I don't think that that's going to hurt him in particular. But a way that you can actually stick it to Matt Gates and hurt him is to expose what he said about the people who vote for him. Now, Mark Wayne Mullen did have something to say about that. I mean, there was many times that he would go out on, on news programs in the evening and he would tell me personally, hey, I've got to go sell my constituent catheters because all he was doing was selling himself and evidently his constituent base is, is an older base and that he thought that was funny. To me, that's not funny. You take your job and make it serious, do what's right by it and serve. This isn't, a, this isn't an opportunity for you just to have a an opportunity to promote yourself, which that was what Matt Gates' goals was. So step one, paint him as a sexual deviant. Check. Step two, expose his disdain for his own constituents. Check. Step three, well, put his hypocrisy on full display. So on Tuesday, when we talked about Kevin McCarthy's ouster, there was a moment during the debate period where Matt Gates was booed after he condemned the corporate cash that his GOP colleagues willingly accepted. Now, he said that in response to them saying that he was doing all of this for attention and just trying to fundraise off of it. And just days later, all of a sudden, after he called out their corruption, we learned that he's also courting corporate donors. Ross Story explains the Daily Beast is reporting that Matt Gates, who has pledged not to take money from corporate PACs, is not above courting GOP mega donors. 
The publication has obtained a video conference call organized by Stop the Steal fundraiser Carolyn Wren, in which Gates buttered up right-wing sugar daddies with off-the-record details about private conversations he'd had with former President Donald Trump. The most interesting part of the video, however, was the way Wren advised donors to use their wealth to bend Republican lawmakers to their wills. And that right there is exactly why Gates says that he is supposedly against these types of corporate donations. Because if you raise small dollar donations from your constituents exclusively, then you're not going to have to be beholden to these large corporations who help you get elected. But there he was at a fundraiser organized by an insurrectionist who encouraged wealthy donors to use their wealth to influence and basically buy off politicians. The exact thing that Matt Gates condemned his colleagues for doing. And I've got to say, it's really interesting to suddenly see all of these leaks pop up out of nowhere, right? It kind of feels almost coordinated because it probably is. But Matt Gates isn't just chumming it up with GOP mega donors. He's still soliciting donations from his own constituents. And side note, far-right propagandist Mark Levin shared this fundraising email that he got from Gates where he claims that McCarthy struck a deal with Democrats. And Levin pointed out that Marxist Democrats, it's funny that he calls them Marxists, unanimously backed you, moron. Will you vacate your seat for your shameless serial lies to conservatives and the nation? Of course not. Now, unfortunately for Mark Levin, he was ratioed into oblivion, which is something that Matt Gates pointed out while sharing his donation link again. Yeah, so I had to share that with you since we're already on the subject of fundraising and GOP mega donors because I thought that it was funny. It does seem as if the rank and file GOP voters are with Matt Gates and the GOP establishment will there with McCarthy. So it's interesting to see this play out. But um, I assume that all of these leaks that we're seeing, the people who are all of a sudden sharing these details that are incriminating about you know, uh, Matt Gates. I think this is probably just the beginning. But the pro-McCarthy Republicans, they're not just trying to destroy him covertly by leaking things to the press. They're openly plotting the demise of his political career. And one Republican is on the record talking about how he wants to physically assault Matt Gates. And I'm not talking about Chip Roy again. We're talking about a different Republican. So the Hill reports immediately after the vote Tuesday, Representative Don Bacon told reporters that Gates should be removed from the House GOP conference, adding he's He's not a Republican. Representative Mike Lawler, who said Tuesday that he would have hit Gates square between the eyes with the speaker's gavel, echoed Bacon's sentiment Wednesday, saying he believes the Florida Republican should be kicked out of the conference. Punchbowl News reported Wednesday night that Lawler said he is considering offering a motion to expel Gates from the group. Gates, for his part, is disregarding the criticism being directed toward him. Asked about Lawler's square between the eyes comment and if he expects to be expelled by the conference, Gates returned fire. Quote, I think that that was a very frustrated person who's having to come to grips with these stages of grief, Gates told Bloomberg TV of Lawler. Quote, I'm not much for political violence. I don't want to hit anybody, he later added. If Mike Lawler comes at me with a gavel, I'm not entirely sure that would concern me. But that's not the direction I think we ought to go. I think we ought to maybe craft a budget before an attack strategy. So GOP infighting is so bad that you have members saying, I want to hit him in the face with a speaker gavel. And on top of that, Lawler wants him expelled. But he's not the only one. In fact, The Hill is also reporting that Republican Dave Joyce, who they call a moderate, which I don't think that a moderate Republican is actually a thing that exists. But regardless, he's more moderate than a lot of the fascists in his party. But he says that he would vote to expel all eight Republicans who voted to oust McCarthy, which tells us that Matt Gates isn't the only target of the GOP's ire. And another main target is seemingly Nancy Mace. Now, Politico reports that the knives are out for her, too, writing House Republicans are now weighing whether to expel Mace from at least two centrist leaning groups she belonged to, as Politico first reported. Her staff was quickly removed from several internal GOP communications channels shortly after her vote Tuesday. But here's my favorite part. During a Fox News interview later on Wednesday, Mace delivered a plea for donations that she acknowledges violated House rules that bar lawmakers from soliciting political contributions while on Capitol grounds. Her office says she self-reported the matter to the House Ethics Committee. Unreal. Now, also in her appearance on Steve Bannon's program, she made a plea for donations saying that they are coming after me, they being the Republican establishment, and she's right to suspect that because they are, right? They're out for blood, they're out for retribution, and she is one of the main targets. I think not because she's as bad as Matt Gates, but because she was seemingly somebody who was more reasonable. She initially called Matt Gates a fraud, but 
you know, she went along with him. So I think that they expected better. And as a result, they're going to try to destroy her. Now, Matt Gates, he may have already been on his way out of the House of Representatives because he's reportedly planning a gubernatorial run in Florida after DeSantis is out. But May seemingly has no plans to step aside. She wants to keep her seat, as far as I know. And her race is much more competitive than Gates's. So in terms of her, she can't be as firebrand as Gates. So this was a really risky move for her. But when it comes to expulsion, I don't want to make it seem like everyone is on board with expulsion because that isn't actually the case. For example, Jim Jordan, who needs Gates' support for his own bid to be speaker, defended Gates, calling him talented, which is hilarious, and saying that he actually doesn't support expulsion. There's also an additional layer to the infighting that I didn't even anticipate. So aside from Jim Jordan, Steve Scalise is another potential McCarthy replacement who threw his hat in the ring, but McCarthy is currently trying to destroy Steve Scalise's bid behind the scenes through proxies, according to an Axios report and they add quote Scalise and McCarthy have long been viewed as rivals with tensions spilling over into the public eye on multiple occasions in recent years sources told Axios it's not surprising McCarthy would not look to assist Scalise in obtaining the gavel so the factionalization caused by this motion to vacate has really demonstrated how ill-equipped the GOP is at governing. I mean, if they can't even agree on a leader and there's this much infighting, then how can they ever accomplish what they want? And that's good because everything that they want is evil and demonic and would hurt working class people. But I mean, just seeing this, if you are a GOP voter, how can you still support this party given how dysfunctional they are, right? But back to Matt Gates, because after he got the result and the attention that he wanted, well, what does he do? Immediately, he is already <laughs> complaining. I can't believe this. He's already complaining about the temporary speaker that's there because of what he did. I do have to offer some pretty sharp criticism of the new pro tem uh, of the House, Patrick McHenry. We met tonight and he sent us home until Tuesday of next week, Eric. We should be here tomorrow working to elect a new speaker, getting onto our appropriations bills and engaging in a, in a negotiation with the Senate to get the government funded. But instead, whoa, these people have got to go home and cry for a week. They've got to go do a week of hand wringing and bedwetting over the fact that Kevin McCarthy isn't speaker anymore. This institution is about more than one man. It's about the job. How about we pass a budget? So McHenry has the power of the speakership now, and literally his first act as the acting speaker of the House was to send everyone home till Tuesday. That's moving in the wrong direction. We got to get a new speaker and we've got to get leadership to understand a sense of urgency that your viewers and the American people all feel. I find this so incredibly funny because it hasn't been a couple of days and he's already attacking the new speaker. Now, it's not super surprising that he doesn't like McHenry, considering McHenry is a McCarthy ally, but he's demonstrating how unreasonable he is and thus giving fuel to the establishment Republicans who are currently trying to destroy his career by painting him as an unreasonable, unappeasable hack. So good job giving them ammunition, dumbass. But one of the demands of the pro-McCarthy Republicans is they want a change to the rules that allows just one member to spark a motion to vacate vote and gates surprisingly did signal support for that although under certain conditions specifically he says that he would give them whatever they wanted if they supported democratic lawmaker ro Khanna's anti-corruption reforms which include a ban on political donations from lobbyists or PACs, a ban on congressional stock trading and 12-year term limits for members of congress now i agree with these things although not necessarily term limits because while it sounds good on paper in practice i think this would end up hurting progressives more because i don't want to see someone like bernie sanders get term limited out like i get the demand man for it because you have people in power who refuse to step down who stay too long but i think that in the end it's something that would end up hurting the left more and also according to studies from latin america they show that term limits are actually correlated with an increase in corruption so it doesn't necessarily stop corruption in the way that we would expect but a ban on stock trading however and a ban on corporate donations 
that would be a game changer. And that alone would encourage me to support this. But I don't think that this would ever happen because most Republicans in Congress have zero name recognition. So they have to raise money almost exclusively through corporate PACs. And they can't put out a fundraising email in the same way that Marjorie Greene or Matt Gates can and get the same response by grassroots Republican supporters. And the same is true for a lot of corporate Democrats as well. So in supporting this, they would basically be undermining their own electoral chances. Furthermore, if they support a 12-year term limit, then a lot of them would be term limited out. They'd be term limiting themselves out of Congress. So it seems unlikely that, that they would support this. But I've got to say, I am pleasantly surprised to see Matt Gates propose something like this and not some sort of a bill to murder immigrants or trans people or something because he is a fascist. Make no mistake about it. And I expected the worst from him. But for him to take this stance, is he virtue signaling? Does he actually support this? Um, I don't know. I can't say for sure. I don't know what's in his heart, even though he's a bad person. But for him to say he would choose to undo that motion to vacate rule in favor of these rules, I think he gets credit where it's due, right? But as this debacle continues, I do want you all to keep in mind that this instability was not brought about because the Democratic Party refused to bail out McCarthy or because McCarthy struck some sort of a secret deal with Democrats. This instability is a uniquely GOP problem. They've always had problems governing, and this was explained in a short clip uh, on CNN that I want to share with you really quick. McCarthy ousted. Paul Ryan quit in disgust over his right flank. John Boehner pushed out by the Freedom Caucus. Dennis Hastert spent time in prison after admitting sexual abuse. And the hyper-partisan Newt Gingrich, who faced ethical complaints, resigned before his own caucus staged a rebellion. So perhaps the issue isn't actually Democrats, but the insatiable thirst for rebellion within the Republican conference. Yeah. And she is exactly right. So under these current conditions, I just don't know why you would want the job in the first place, because Kevin McCarthy, perhaps more so than his predecessors, did everything he could to appease the far right fascists within his party. But it still wasn't enough. So the question is, will there ever be a speaker good enough for the far right in the GOP? And I think that the answer is no. Because rather than purging these fascists from their party, they've pandered to them for years. They've said, we are ex as extreme as you want us to be. And as a result, the Overton window within the GOP has shifted to the far right to where even moderate Republicans sound like Nazis. So this is kind of them lying in the bed that they've made for themselves. If you don't want these people in your party, you have to stop pandering to them. Because if you pander to these people, they're going to vote these extremists in. And as a result, it's made the GOP incapable of governing. So it's something that the GOP has brought on itself. And listen, I'll be honest with you all. I hope that this leads to the GOP being even more fractured than it is now. I hope that this destroys the Republican Party. I hope that this evil death cult eats itself alive because the Republican Party is an existential threat to humanity. So them getting power is a threat to all of us, not just marginalized people in the United States, but everyone around the globe, because they're saying they're not going to do anything about climate change. In fact, what little progress we've made, they're going to undo it. So whatever we can do to deny these fascist extremists power, I think we should uh, we should do that. And if they're going to do that to themselves, destroy themselves from within, then I absolutely applaud this implosion and I hope it continues. So, um, yeah, we'll leave that there.